So, turns out 3D printing after all was fun, and I've been missing out. Who knew? So yeah, uh, I don't know if you saw my last video, uh, but I, I did this, you know, laptop cooling, it was meant to be a joke video. I was wearing a pair of headphones with a mod mic clipped on the side of it, and it's just a me thing, mate. I hate wearing headphones. So I, I just thought, I wonder if I can make a stand uh, for this mod mic thing, which I'm never going to use, obviously, because I've got this thing. And by, just by the way, if the audio does sound really weird, which is you know, weirder than normal, it's I've literally in the last hour moved my entire setup over to this desk and I haven't changed it any of the audio settings in the GoXLR software, like the compressor and all that's all the same, the noise gates all the same. So if it sounds weird, that's why. Apologies in advance, I need to spend some time sorting that out and setting it up, never mind. But yeah, uh, I just thought, new 3D printer, thank you very much to everyone who gave me tips in the, I just bought a new 3D printer video after 10 years of running a CAD YouTube channel, uh, late to the party much. But I've been having an absolute hoot with Fusion 360 and generative design and a computer designed all of this. And it has been nothing but an absolute hoot. And yeah, it's went through a number of different iterations before I got to something that I was kind of happy with. And uh, I mean, I'm not going to use this. It's just it's just because I can and I'm making a video about it. But anyway, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So this is one of one of my first attempts. Uh, well, actually, it's not. Um, one of my first attempts ended up just, I was like, ooh, crack. Yeah, all right, I need a wall thickness needs to be increased. I don't know if the camera's going to focus on it, but at the top, go on, you can do it, mate, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Go on, go on, go on, there you go. So th this is where the mod mic sort of slips in and then rests in that groove. Funny thing is, though, I can't get it in because the uh, ladies, <laughs> because the cable, uh, there's no slit, ladies. <laughs> the cable to go into and I thought oh well done Neil I mean I could have just got the multi-tool out and just you know ground a slot into it but then I thought nope I'm having too much fun here I'll open up Fusion 360 again I'll start a new study and then that's when I ended up with I mean it's just a very basic extrusion there for the cable to just slide in and then the mic goes in like that which is exactly what happens it's perfect tolerance uh, what isn't a perfect tolerance though is the body I mean I think that's probably down my 3D printer settings. There was enough space there for the mod mic to slide in, but it grips it really hard. Ladies. <laughs> and there you go. There's a mod mic stand. Now, I'm not going to be using this. I've got all of this stuff here. It was, it's just because it was just so much fun to do. And a, a computer designed that. A computer designed that. I'll show you like how I did it and like, what the inputs were, but I just found it fascinating. It was just so much fun to do. And if I head on over, this is what I need my my stream deck set up mate so if we head on over to um a go xlr banging it ladies <laughs> so then we're now talking into the mod mic and to be honest it probably doesn't even sound that much different to the very expensive broadcaster mic but yeah i just didn't like, i hate where it's a me thing but i just hate wearing headphones and that's supposed to clip on the headphones so if i switch back to the broadcast uh, See, there's a bug with the GoXLR software. So as soon as I switch over to this, it's gonna, it's actually gonna mute me. Physically unplug the goddamn mic from the GoXLR and then it turns the audio back on. But that's a bug in GoXLR, never mind. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so in Fusion 360, it's actually, oh, it's so much fun. Honestly, I just went through iteration after iteration after iteration of just messing about with it. So this is the model that I ended up 3D printing in the end, so that is that. That one is that one. That was 3D printed. I toyed with the idea of putting some sort of cable clips on the on the front here, just modeling something there, so the tips. But then I thought, I'm not actually gonna use it, so it's not really worth the time. So I didn't. But this is the study. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's very simple, but it was modeled to be a generative design study. So the green bits are the preserved features which are those bits at the bottom. So that's me telling the soft, that's me telling the AI, keep those bits, don't do anything with those, don't strip them out, don't minimize them, don't shrink them, keep those bits. So that's the base and the top. The red bits is me saying, do not under any circumstances spill material into those bits. When you're generating all of this webbed alien looking stuff, don't make any material in those bits because that's where I need to put something. Oh, ladies. Wow, well, I need to grow up. And the yellow bit is the starting shape. That's me saying, right, 
we're going to start you know the, these bits are connected essentially so the, the that's going that direction so it's even though it's a starting shape and it didn't end up looking anything like that it's a guide saying kind of that's the way we want it to sort of head and that's really it and we've got some forces so we've got a force on the front face of 300 newtons which is obviously overkill and it doesn't mean much either because this is all on the assumption that it's solid material and then you can 3d print it and end up with like a way like a wall thickness of one mil right you know so the, the doesn't you basically just put in forces to end up with a, sh a shape that you like but um you know if you do end up 3d printing this with a complete thick you know solid plastic with the right material properties and then in theory it should be used it should be quite close to to behave in how this predicts uh, but for the materials I ended up just putting in a whole bunch of random materials to be honest I for additive just uh, so I, I made PLA ABS plastic and just dro drive them to randomly drop some in and then also I did I, just, I, I asked for some five axis milling options as well but I, I don't have a five axis milling machine but I just said just show me what that would look like as well so steel alloy uh, some food grade stainless steel and steel carbon why not objectives safety factor of two and then uh, unrestricted additive and then yeah minimum tool held uh, tool diameter of two and then so those are the sentence and then these are the outcomes i don't know if these were the outcomes that i got for this or if i've been playing around with it since <laughs> i can't remember now i've been messing about with it so much here's a bunch of here, well, here's a bunch of outcomes that it gave me yeah some of them you end up with some weird ones, you end up with some quite interesting ones, but you can filter them down. Like these, these ones are obviously metal ones, they're always going to be. Anything that doesn't have a lot of internal structure to it is always going to be metal. If you made that out of PLA, it would just snap as soon as you pulled it off the bed. But 5-axis mill stainless steel 304, that would work for the forces that were applied. I mean, that, I mean, that that's quite an attractive looking microphone stand, to be honest, I'm quite enjoying that one. And then you can filter them down the left hand side as well so you can say only show me the ones that are additive manufactured based off of uh, pla so we can isolate pla and then i can say oh actually well that one looks a bit too webbed that one looks a bit too thin i like the look of that one there uh yeah not too bad and then what you do is you just create a design from the outcome and then that's what you, when you end up with that it creates an actual model which you can then export is an STL file and then drop it into Cura or something like that and then slice it and off you go 3D print and, and away you go and it's just been oh I've just had so much fun so yeah thank you again thanks to everyone who's just gave us tips and tricks on the on the 3D printer I've still got a lot of a lot of practice I mean it's taken me ages just to get the hang of this BL touch thing that they gave me with my printer I mean that thing alone was just an absolute mind f on its own just figuring out what the hell that did I, I know now what it does but it took me until like two days ago to figure it out but there you go generative design fusion 360 uh, I'm, I'm just i just want i'm looking around now and i'm looking at what, what can i do with it what else can i do oh i've got a soda stream bottle here can i generatively design a cap for a soda stream bottle yes i can should i probably not but i probably could all right more stuff like this coming on the channel i'm getting right back into this stuff now and uh, I'm really enjoying it. So if you if, if you like this sort of stuff, may get subscribed. Comments down below and anything like this you want to see. And if you found this interesting, let me know. Get subscribed, like the video. If you want to buy a Fusion 360 license, if you want to get into generative design, there's a link in the description to the Autodesk store. Any running promotions, that sort of stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Doodles.